what you're doing here in terms of busting arrays directly leads to kids being able to handle algebra. And their visualisation, their ability to visualise that, if they've had lots of this experience, and then at secondary level, if the teachers can tap into that experience, go back into this, get the counters out in year seven and keep doing that, then all of a sudden there's... Do you remember doing... Some people might all of a sudden start to be start to tremble at the moment. Oh my god! <laughs> Not maths. Okay, but this is this because if I bust my array this way, and once again, how many different ways can I do it? Lots of different ways. So this will just be one way. But if I was to go, oh, okay, well I've got four there, and I can drag these ones across here. So I've still got my, right across the top, I've still got my 5 times 6. So I'm pretty convinced that there's 30. Okay, But now I've broken my 6 up into 4 and 2. And I've broken my 5 up into 3 and 2. So I've now got these bits. How many bits have I got in here? I've got one, two, three, and Jervisoni. Is there a faster way you could do that, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's a faster way. But like, well, there's my four times three, isn't it? You know, and so there I've got my four times three is 12, and I've got my two times three, is my 6, and my 4 times 2 is my 8, and my 2 times 2, alright? If I was to go and how would, how would students then record that? Well, I know that 5 times 6 is 30, but I can say it's equal to, well, I've got 4 times 3, and I've got my 2 times 3, and I've got my 4 times 2, and I've got my 2 times 2. So I've got all of those different products added together. Okay. Have a look at what that's equal to. I know that the total is 6 times 5, isn't it? But busting 6 into 4 plus 2 times my 5 into 3 plus 2 I know that that is equal to all of this, isn't it? Okay. And then did you remember learning things like FOIL? First, outers, inners, last. <laughs> and why? Okay. But notice that it's the four, it's the four times the three, which is that array there. So it's that four times that three. That's that array. It's 4 times that 2. So I had the 4 times the 3 and the 4 times the 2. And then, of course, then I had the 2 times the 3 and the 2 times the 2. <coughs> and so then, if kids <coughs> have had experience doing that and pulling it apart like that and then recording it in all different ways, then when their teacher gets to the point where they say, well, let's not put... Let's not put numbers there, but let's say we had, I had A rows here and B rows here, and I had C columns here and D columns here. Then I know that the number of counters here is that times that. It's A times C. I know the number of counters here is A times D. The number of counters here is B times C and B times D. And that will be the expansion for that thing that we always thought, why does that work? So what you're doing here with the ray busting, right back, right back to the smallest kids, is critical in them developing that sense 
of visualising the numbers, how you can pull it apart, see it in lots of different ways, and that's what will eventually get generalised when they get into secondary school. Now, there are lots of kids in secondary who know lots of rules and can perform this, and they have no idea what they're doing. And so out of justice to those kids, we need to go one step further and to make sure not only can they do that, but they sort of have an understanding of it. All right. Plus, I just think the array busting is really good when you have to multiply two numbers together and they're really big. Like I know here we're probably picking like a, a reasonable size number because otherwise you count us, you end up with 100 mi million of them on your page. But what happens when you start getting big numbers that you've got to multiply together? And say so if you had 24 times 36, and I know we, res we, we immediately go to, all right, well, let's write a vertical algorithm, but as soon as you're used to your array busting and things like that, and you can say that's 24 by 36, how can I bust that 24? I could just do the 20 and the 4, couldn't I? That becomes the 20 and the 4, and the 36 could be the 30 and the 6, and now I've got a whole lot of products that I'm probably pretty comfortable in performing. I'll start with that one because that's the smallest, so I can do the 4 6s. Hopefully I can do that one. And then you've got your 20 times your 6, and I've got 30 times 4, and I've got 30 times 20. And now I've just got a whole lot of things that I can add up. That comes, like I, I could imagine kids later on as they're starting to move towards the higher growth points, starting to use those as strategies. Notice I haven't drawn the counters, but that is a ray busting, it's the same thing. And it's that step from modeling, modeling it all through to partial modeling to then what does it look like next? It actually starts to look like diagrams and sketches and things like that. But that idea there is exactly the same as this. Exactly the same. But I think kids need to go through this bit first. They need to get the counters and move them and do all of those things because when you look at those growth points, that's where those kids are. They need to do that bit first. And eventually some kids in your class might go a bit quicker and they mightn't. They mightn't have to. Or they mightn't actually need to pull them apart. Who was saying that before they didn't have to pull them apart? They could actually just go, oh, here's one, here's one, here's one, here's one. That's that next step up. Yeah. Anyway, that's the end of my um, rant about the other one. Apologies. <laughs> Apologies for anyone who felt nervous for a minute that we were going to do this sort of maths. Anyway.